We're going to work through challenge nine, which asks us to create a function called cycle iterator that accepts an array and returns a function. The return function doesn't accept any arguments, but when it's first invoked, it returns the first element of the array. When it's invoked a second time, it returns the second element of the array and so on. After returning the last element of the array, the Next invocation goes back to the beginning of the array, returning the first element again, and moves on to return the second after that, and so forth. So let's go ahead and code a skeleton of the problem. The first thing we want to do is declare a function called cycleiterator that accepts a single argument, an array, and this function cycle iterator has to return a function. But the return function doesn't accept any arguments. Instead, this return function has a job, which is to cycle through each of the elements of the array in order and return them in order, one at a time, each time the function is invoked. So let's make a note of that. So how are we going to accomplish this? Well, we know that this return function somehow needs to know what the original array was, so that's the argument that was passed to cycle iterator. Second, this return function also needs to remember where it is in the cycle through the elements of the array so it knows which element of the array it needs to return. Now remember that with closure, we have access to any variables that were in scope at the time this return function was created. So we'll be able to use closure in two ways in this problem. First, we'll have access to the input array to cycle iterator. We can take for granted that that will be available to us inside the body of this return function. Second, we'll use closure to keep track of an index variable. So that's going to be a number that corresponds to a position in the array, and we'll use that index inside of this return function to access each of the array elements in order. So one of the jobs of this return function will be to update the index variable. So the trick here is to declare that index variable inside of cycle iterator, but outside the body of the return function. And we know that index will then be available to us. So we'll be declaring an index variable here. And we'll start it at zero because this return function, we always want it to return the first item of the array first uh, on that initial invocation. So now that we know that we're using an index variable, let's give a few more jobs to this return function. Let's make sure that it's going to be able to update the index variable so the first thing we want to do is grab the value of the array to return using the index. Next, let's make sure that we update the index variable. But there's one more thing that we need to do in addition to updating that index variable, which means incrementing it by one, we need to check whether we've actually gone through all of the elements of the array. So if we've invoked this function enough times that we've returned every single item in the array, we want to make sure that we update index to be zero once again. So let's check if the index variable is greater than or equal to the array length. And if so, we set the index to zero. Finally, we can return the resultant value. And I'll call this fab the result value of the array. Great, so let's go ahead and code this out. 
I'm going to declare a variable using let because I know that this variable needs to change. We'll call it index and we'll initialize it with the value 0. Finally, we deal with our return function. So we do that here. Let's actually declare a constant. We'll call it result and we'll set it equal to the element of the array at the position indicated by that index variable. So the first time it'll start out as zero, so it'll grab the first item in the array. But then we also want to make sure that we update the index variable and increment it by one. So we'll go ahead and do both of these things in one step by using this increment operator to uh, update the index variable, but it'll actually return, it'll evaluate to the current value of index before it updates the index variable. Then once we have that result saved, we're going to check what our index is. We're going to see if index is greater than or equal to the length of the array. And if so, we want index to be zero. And then finally, we can return the result. And let's check if this works in the example that's provided. Let's uncomment a few of these lines. We'll see whether we can use cycle iterator to cycle through each of the three days in this three day weekend array. So the first time we call get day, which is the return function from cycle iterator, we anticipate that it will give us the value of the first element, which is Friday. And then subsequent calls should log the following two elements in the array. So we should see Friday, Saturday, then Sunday. And then a fourth call should give us the first element of the array because we want to cycle through the elements and start back at the first one once we've returned the three items in the array, well, once we've in, uh, returned all of the items in the array. And there we have it.